Because that'll be defined in more time. numbers you gotta multiply together together to get a product. Good? That sounds like two factors. What's the definition of a single factor? Uh, a number that was used to get a product. A number that was used to make a product. That's good. Um, so typically the uh, kinds of definitions that you hear as a math teacher are like uh, a number is a factor of another number if it goes into that number. Right? But goes into is really non-specific. It's kind of uh, ambiguous. <coughs> what does the goes into mean? Right? Uh, well, specifically, goes into would have to be defined this way. Okay? So for a number, in the case of a number, uh, let's say one number is a factor of another number. If it multiplies by another number. factor of k if it, what's it? It's a pronoun. What is it referring to? M. M. So let's put M. Just so there's no confusion. If M multiplies by yet another number. factor of k if m multiplies by n, and it's just some other number, it doesn't really matter what it is as long as it exists. Okay, so multiplies by n, some other number to make k, the number that you're hoping to be a factor of. fits that description, right? We could switch ahead to M. N would be a factor of K because N would, factor, would multiply by M to get K. So uh, they're, they're both factors. It happens, it just so happens. Um, but this definition now, we can apply to, to anything where you can take two of those things, whatever they are, multiply them together, and get another one of those things. Okay. So when I say things, I could mean numbers. You can multiply a number by another number to get, a, get another number. First two that are multiplied together will be factors of the product. Does that make sense? Kind of all the way lots of different words and things. You guys okay with words? Okay. I like words. I like them a lot. Well, we could 
could take this definition and it would also work. We could just completely copy it, bring it down here, and it would work if we're in a different group of stuff, a different set called polynomials. So now in this case, uh, M refers to a polynomial, K refers to a polynomial, N refers to a polynomial. I'll uh, change this to green so it all matches. I think that's not what I wanted to do. It's hard to say. So let's not leave it so uh, ooh, nebulous, right? All these words, terms, and stuff. Let's use a, an example, okay? Example. Uh, three is a factor. Uh, you tell me. It's a good factor of what? Nine. Nine. Anything else? Uh, Twelve. Thirty. Yeah, lots of numbers. Right? Let's choose one that's not the square of three so that we can have two different articles play together. Uh, 12, I heard, 12. Okay. Three is a factor of 12. What's your proof of that? Because three times four is 12. That little upside down triangle of circles is because. Okay. I was about to ask you about that. The latest what is that? Trying to think I'm trying to it. I said because as I wrote it. Well, I thought it's well, it just it almost seems like thinking thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really? thinking about it. I'm thinking about three as a factor of twelve, and I come up with oh, because three times four is twelve. I could I could also easily say four is a factor of twelve because three times four is twelve. So there's a, there is an example of what this is saying. Okay. Well, now we want an example with polynomials. Let's see if you're if you're in tune with what I'm saying here. So you see the example with numbers. I want you on your own individually. Uh, see if you can come up with an example that's very much the same as this. Only we don't use numbers. We use polynomials. Okay. So crack open your notebooks and take out and sheet your pencils. Put them in a sheet. And the example that we're going to use is going to sound a lot like this. Blah is a factor of blah because blah times blah equals blah. Okay. If you don't, that's fine. But I just want your brains to uh, work, try and synthesize this information. Okay, so we're trying to come up with an example of, of a factor in the world, in the set of polynomials, not just numbers. Okay. So where did I get three when I made up this example? I made it up. Made it up. Okay, so we just need to make up a polynomial. Can you tell me a polynomial? Try and keep it kind of simple. Yeah. 
3x plus 2 is a polynomial. Very good. 3x plus 2. Okay, instead of 3, the number 3, we have the polynomial 3x plus 2. It's a degree 1 polynomial. Is a factor of. You have that part, Jay? Yeah. What do you have? 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. Plus 5x plus 2. Well, that seems pretty uh, audacious. Did you just say 3x plus 2 is a factor of this? How do you know? Because 3x plus 2 times x plus 1 is 3x one. plus 2 times 3x plus 1? No, times x plus 3. 3x, oh, x minus, what? 3x <laughs> plus 2 <laughs> times <laughs> what? No, what? 3x plus 2 times x plus 1. Ah, x plus 1, I'm sorry. X plus 1. 3x plus 2 times x plus 1, what? Is equal to 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. That's excellent, yes. Very, very good. Um, so it's the same reasoning. One thing's a factor of another thing if that first thing multiplied by something. It doesn't matter what it is. It just has to be something, and then the result is this. Factor to another factor equals the desired product. Okay, so that's the definition of a factor, what a factor is. That's a noun. Come over here. The verb form of factor would be you know, to factor. So let's talk about a number. You have a number. And you factor that number. What does that mean? What did you do? That is good. Do what? You took it out of the number. Uh, I think it's, so. I think you're thinking like you factored out a number, but not a specific number, but you factored like so. For example, like uh, fourteen. So you got this number, and you don't know what any of the factors are right offhand. And then somebody just says, please factor this number. How do you factor it? What does it look like factoring that? What's that? Factors. Find its factors, right? Write it like that. It does the same, right? 14, 2 times 7, they're the same number. Okay. So we take this guy right here, which is this nice old number. And then we break it apart in such a way that we have a number times another number by this factor. Right? So we write it to the number as a product of two numbers. case we, we found is prime factorization because 2 and 7 are both prime and there's no more factoring that we can do. Right? So we take down prime factorization. So we're going to do the same thing today with polynomials. So we've done this some with quadratics. We've factored quadratics into two factors, but the, you know maybe there's more involved uh, in, in this section. Um, so for a polynomial, Same. We're going to write the polynomial, whatever polynomial we're given, write it, the polynomial, as a product of two, well, not numbers, but two polynomials, two other polynomials. Okay. Let's get warmed up with a polynomial. We should be able to factor a pretty simple one like x squared plus 5x plus 6. Factor that. It's a simple quadratic. We've done it many times.
factor it. I'm going to two factor this polynomial. I'm going to write it as a product of two polynomials. So what are those two polynomials? Uh huh. How can we make sure that we factored it correctly? Why would they write each other, distribute that stuff into that stuff? Bob's your uncle. Okay. See if we can now expand a little bit to the kinds of polynomials that we can factor. I'll give you one that's so very similar to this, but only slightly different. x to the fourth plus 5x squared. Find a way to write it as a product of two other polynomials. x squared, 3x, or 3 times x squared is 3x squared. Put those like terms together, you get 5x squared. 3 times 2 is 6. Something? Yeah. You get uh, x uh, cubed uh -huh. plus 2 and uh -huh. x cubed plus 2. Yes. Okay, so it's working out just the same, except for, in this case, we're using x and x, x squared and x squared, x cubed and x cubed. Okay? You notice all these are what we call a quadratic form. They're not quadratics. This is the only quadratic. Quadratics are defined as degree 2 polynomials. The biggest power you see is 2. But here we see the biggest power is 4. So that's not a quadratic, but it is quadratic form. And here's what quadratic form means. It comes down to the variables and the power of the variables. If you look at this, if you square x squared, what do you get? 4. x to the 4th. Right? Squared. 
square it. If you square x to the third, what do you get? x to the sixth. So if whatever this is, if you square this, just, just the variable, not the, not the coefficient, but just the variable, if you square it and you get that, it's quadratic form. Okay. And they come in three terms. Three terms, this squared gives you that. So we factored quadratics. We're also going to factor things of quadratic form that look the same as quadratics. A couple of things. Just start keeping a list of notes. Quadratics. We can factor quadratics. Quadratic form. And in these, both of these cases, you'll see three terms. Not two terms, not four terms, three terms. Okay. Just going to kind of build up the kinds of, of, uh, of things we're going to look out for. We're going to look out for quadratics, we're going to look out for things in quadratic form. We're also going to look out for other stuff. So it's going to be a lot of practice and The thing that makes factoring polynomials difficult is all the, it's really the coefficients, I think, most of the time. The, they're these big numbers, there's lots of ways to factor them. Um, it can get really complicated and uh, really time consuming. So, as a first step, I would say this would be the number one thing to do every time would to be to look at all of, the, all of the terms and see if they have something in common. Do all these terms have something in common? What do they have in common? 2x. And an x, so we'll factor it out. Now be careful that you don't divide it by 2x and just like divide every number by 2 and then divide everything by x and just disappear them. If you do that, it won't be the same as how it started. You need to be able to multiply your, your final answer all together and get the original. If you were to just get rid of the 2x, you wouldn't have the 2x multiplied by x again. So just back up to 2x, we'll be left with x squared minus 2x minus 8. So by taking out that greatest common factor, we've made it a lot easier. On to factor that. What kind of a polynomial is that? Special name? Quadratic. 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 Oh. Quadratic. How does this quadratic factor? X minus 
minus 4. Excellent. Okay. Now remember that first step that I told you? I just take your best, your best attempt at this one. Check and see, check and see what? What you can factor out. What you can factor out from everything is, is there something in common among both of these terms? Two, what? Two, two and a z. And I'm just going to share a common mistake here. Uh, looks good because 2z times 16z to the fourth is 32z to the fifth. And, and the thing you factored out was 2z, and so a lot of times that thing just goes away. But I want you to think about this. When you distribute the 2z, you get 32z to the fifth, but you don't wind up with a negative 2z. Where, where'd it go? How are we going to wind up getting a minus 2z? Negative 1. We need a negative 1 to distribute to. Okay, so we'll get rid of that parentheses and move that over. Put a minus 1. Okay, so we do get the 2z times 16z to the fourth gives us 32z to the fifth. And 2z times this negative 1, when you distribute that, gives us the minus 2z that we need. That's great. We factor out a common monomial, is what we call that, a monomial, a single term that uh, the, they all share. Um, are we done? Doesn't look like a quadratic that we were looking at a minute ago. Factorable? How so? Uh, if you take a 4z out of it, so it would be like 2z, 2z times 4z squared. 4z squared. Plus 1. Plus 1. Times 4z squared minus 1. Ah. Okay. That's good. You didn't factor like a quadratic, right? Uh, but it, did, it didn't have three terms, it just had two terms. There's a special name for that pattern as well. Do you remember what it is? Difference, it's a difference of we covered it before, so it's not, not new, but it might be a kind of rusty. What kind of a number is 16? It's in a special class of number. Square, square number. It's a square number. And it would need to be a square number if this is going to work out. And that difference of squares, we talked about this before, where we need to be able to multiply these two together to get that, and these two to get that, and we also need it to work in such a way that that middle term that you normally get with quadratics cancels out. We get a 4z squared times negative 1, that's a negative 4z squared, positive 4z, 4z squared, they cancel each other out. It's called the difference of squares. This is a square, this is a square, this is a square, right? One's a square, what do you square to get one? One times itself is one. Okay, so watch out for those differences squares. Are we done? Factor it as much as we can. Can't factor 2z, obviously. That's not factorable. 4z squared plus 1. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't look good. What about 4z squared minus 1? Does that look familiar? Okay, then it's similar to this. Are they similar? Four squared minus one. Similarity. Say it, missed it. Four is a square number. What's that? Four is a square number. Four is a square number. Z is a square. One is a square. It's a difference. It's a difference of squares. Again, this was a difference of squares. This is also a difference of squares. How does this difference of squares factor? 2z plus 1 times. You got it. 2z plus 1, 2z minus 1. Okay. Now, 
difference of squares works. Uh, we, we've talked about it before. You can go and revisit that uh, either in the tutorial videos or the lecture videos. A sum of squares doesn't work. It doesn't have any help with factoring. At least if you want to use real numbers, it doesn't factor. You can use imaginary numbers, but uh, we won't do that. So this is as factored as possible. We did the uh, di difference of squares. We had another difference of squares. Factor that. There's no way to factor a sum of squares with real numbers. So we're done. So since there's no other factor we can do, we call this the prime factorization. This factor is prime because there's no way to write it as a factor, uh, as a product of two other factors, unless you just do one times two z minus one, which is silly. This is prime. You can't break it down anymore. This is prime. You can't break it down anymore. This is prime. You can't break it down anymore. So let's see. We got uh, quadratics. but it fits that quadratic form. Now we got difference of squares. Another thing to keep an eye out for is your factoring. We do have some squares in here. And in the previous case, yeah, we had it two times in a row. square number, but is it some kind of other number? Some other kind of number? It's a cube. What do you cube to get 8? So you have x cubed, clearly a cube, because you're cubing something to get it, minus 2 cubed. So I can tell you that this also factors as a nice little pattern by which it factors. Difference of cubes also factors. So you have to know what you're cubing to get these, and here we go. X minus 2, that's the thing you're cubing, minus the thing you're cubing, not the thing you're cubing. Times this thing squared plus 2 times x, 2 times x, plus 2 squared. As x, minus, x cubed minus 2 cubed, you can see that x goes here, 2 goes there. It's x minus 2, that's important. Okay. The consistent thing with all difference of uh, cubes is this minus here, plus, and plus. And first thing cubed, second thing cubed, and you got your x, whatever that is, squared. Uh, then whatever this is times whatever that is, whatever you're cubing times whatever else you're cubing, 2 times x, plus the square of this. Gotta be careful that it's not it's not eight squared, it's two squared. We also have a thing called sum of cubes. So sum of squares doesn't work, but it turns out the sum of cubes can be factored. Uh, so let's come up with a another example like eight x cubed plus 27. A's a cube, x is a cube. What would you put here? What would you cube to get 8x cubed? What's that? 2. 2 and an x. So if you cube the 2, you get 8. You get cube the x, you get x cubed. And what are you cubing to get 27? Nine times three. But nine is three times three, so you got three times three times three. Three cubed. Okay. Really similar 
to the difference of cubes, okay, but where this is a minus plus plus, a sum of cubes plus minus plus. But all the other stuff is the same. Okay. This guy right here, the first thing you're cubing goes here. The second thing you're cubing goes here. Here, you can see how we took this x and square it. So we're going to square this. We square 2x, what do we get? 2x squared. 4x squared. Four. 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 Square that whole thing. Okay? Can you follow this pattern and see what would go right here? We just bring it over to 2x. Well, we did. To get this middle guy here, we did this times this. If we did that here, what would we get? 6x. Three times two x, six x. Same pattern gonna go here. This was two squared. So there's a couple of examples um, on page three fifty four. Uh, the little box there, with the blue stripe across the top says key concepts. There's the formulas. It's for sum of cubes and difference of cubes. To use the sum of cubes and difference of cubes, you just need to make sure that you understand what it is that you're cubing to get this. You get it, the, the A and the B that you see in the difference of cubes are this. This is A and this is B. 2x is A and 3 is B. Wondering this, but maybe you're not. Maybe you're not thinking about it too hard. But this guy right here, or this guy right here. What kind of what kind of polynomials are those? What's that? They are trinomials, and they're that special one that you gave the answer for earlier. They're quadratic. They're quadratics. And so you might think, can I factor this quadratic? The answer is no. You can't factor that quadratic. So once you use the difference of cubes with the sum of cubes, this guy right here is done. This is factored as possible. the examples that we just worked out. You can look at the whole formulas on the page that I already referenced. Let's go ahead and factor that out. Okay, so here's the way you factor a sum of cubes. We're going to supply it to uh, what we're working with over here. So first it's necessary to at least see it. You don't mind to have to write it this way, but to see what it is that you're cubing to get these guys here. What are we cubing to get 8c cubed? 2cc. And what are we cubing to get 343? 
a squared. Here's a, this is a. What's a squared? We squared this, we get 4c squared minus, let's see, what's the minus? Minus a times b. Well, here's a, here's b. 14c is a times b uh, plus b squared. Quadratics, quadratic form, remember those are both three terms. We've got difference of squares, difference of cubes, dif or sum of cubes. All of those are two terms. We've done a lot. And we reviewed some, refreshed our memories, learned a couple of new things. Uh, difference of cubes and sum of cubes, learn those two new things. We've got one more that's kind of a mix of old and new. We've actually already done this. We did this when we were factoring quadratics and we had to use the AC method. So if you have uh, learned the AC method, you've already done this next thing. This next thing is called factor grouping. So if you remember the AC method, there was a point where we had uh, four terms, and we group them into two groups of two, and then, you know, the rest follow. It's the same. That was factor by group. That's exactly what it was. So this factor by grouping, the only difference is the middle two terms are not like that. They're different. But the whole thing looks exactly the same. Uh, before we do that, I feel rejuvenated. Mm -hmm. like a man. I fell asleep in the water fountain. Huh? I fell asleep in the water fountain. Well, that's pretty bad. You should get that checked out. Factor by grouping. Again, you've already done it, but I'm going to remind you. of this approach is to group these in groups of two, two groups of two. And if you remember the AC method where it came down to this part, what did we do with each of those groups? Distribute? Factor out, the reverse of distribution. It's the exact opposite of distribution is to take things out that could be distributed back in, right? So what can we undistribute from here? Or factor out? M or one. M, even two M's, right? M squared, two factors of M. Okay, so we got three M minus one. Make sure that minus one does not elude you, okay? Minus one to four. What do we factor out of the 9n minus 3? Three. 3. And at this very moment, we can tell that factor by grouping has been successful. We're not done with it, but it is successful. How do we know? Because uh, we got 3m on both parentheses that are the same. Well, yeah, not just 3m, but 3m minus 1. They're yeah. identical. Right? Yeah. The two, two parentheses are identical. So I'm going to show you what the final result looks like. It's easy to recreate and to, to pair it, right? It's just, you're just mimicking it. 
without really knowing, like a parrot says words, it doesn't really know what they mean, but it can say them, okay? So this next step, you can't go from this step to the next step and not understand why we're gonna, after we see what it looks like, we're gonna understand why, okay? So we'll put three and minus one here, and square plus three here. Well, we're gonna have two sets of parentheses. How do I know three and minus one goes here? Oh, you, so you're saying, I'm not asking why it goes on the right instead of the left, I'm asking, how, how could you like recreate this? How would you know this is one of the parentheses? Well, okay, that's great. That's, if, if you were to, I'm saying, I think you're saying to multiply these together. If you multiply these together, yeah, you will get that. That's how you know that it's correct. But how could I go from this step to that step? Two parentheses, how do I know that 3m minus 1 is one of the parentheses? They're exactly the same. Those two are the same, so I put it right there. And then m squared plus 3, that makes up the other parentheses. Okay. So that would be the, the parity part. I see the pattern. If I saw something like this, like f to the third times f plus 4. 1 plus 7 times f plus 1, what would my final final answer look like? Parenthesis f3 down cubed plus 7, and then parenthesis uh, f plus 1. You can do it, right? Do you know why you could do that? I hope so. We have talked about it. Connor? Because m squared times 3m minus 1 plus 3 times 3m minus 1 is equal to 3m cubed minus m squared, so on and so forth. So you can just. But why? That's just goes here. a shorter way of saying the same thing. It's a little weird. Well, it's, it's equivalent, but it's also very different in that here we have one term plus another term. But here, that's not factored, right? That's not factorization. Remember, factorization means I multiply one thing times another, and that's it. But here, there is multiplication, but I'm adding these two things together. So this is not factorization. This is factorization. One thing times another thing, and that's it. No adding, no subtracting. It's one term times another. That's factorization. So what's the, like, what is mathematically between here and there? Well, on one side you multiply x squared, and then 3m minus 1. On the other side, you multiply 3 times 3m minus 1. Uh -huh. So if you just add those together, and then multiply 3m minus 1, that's what you get in a problem. It's the same answer. Yeah, I think I agree with you. Because it's hard to it's hard to tell exactly what you mean. But I think, yeah, I think we're agreeing. Um, you guys understand? Well, can you do it? I think so. Do you understand why you get from here to there? Why you do it? Distribution. Distribution. Distribute what? If you distribute 3m minus 1 into m squared plus 3, you get the thing that, the equation that's above it. This one? Yes. Yes, yes, we just did reverse distribution. We can take this and distribute it to the m squared, m squared times the whole thing. You know that looks a little different than normal. Normally we would take each item, each number, each term separately and distribute them one at a time. Okay? But the distributive law says if we have something times parentheses, then this times this plus this times this. That. We can distribute the whole thing, 3m minus 1 to m squared, m squared times 3m minus, minus 1. Distribute the 3m minus 1 to the 3, you get 3 times 3m minus 1. These two terms right here, they both have a factor of 3m minus 1. Just like these two terms had a factor of 3 that we factored out, these both have a factor of 3m minus 1 that we factored out, that we undistributed.
the end of the day, you can recreate it. You can just, if I can get to here, if I can just find out what these two things have in common, what these two things have in common, and make sure these two parentheses are identical, we can pack it. Uh, it is really nice and really to your benefit to understand why, that we're just factoring out a 3f minus 1. Well, let's, let's practice it. Let's give you some practice. Uh, number 22. That's not supposed to be a by grouping just like we did a second ago. Uh, group them in two groups of two, other factors, one step at a time. Make sure <coughs> if this starts with a negative, you get the negative in there. You recognize it as part of that group. So we look at this group of two, and we ask ourselves what? What do they have in common? What do they have in common? 25. 25s squared. You can go as far as the two factors in that house. So that leaves us with an S minus 4. I'm going to make sure, just distribute that 25 S squared and see if it works out. Again. 25 S cubed, 25 S squared minus negative 4, negative 100 S uh, squared. See that? Squared. Well, we know we want this other parentheses to be identical to this one. But right now it's it's a negative s plus four. We want a positive s minus four. Can you do something clever there. Can you change the positive from one in front of the uh, parentheses to a negative one? Okay, so if we did that, and then so that's your idea. Put a negative there, a negative there. So then we can change this positive to negative. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how are we sure that's correct? Because once you would uh, when you put it in there, yeah. negative one uh, s uh, will go and come up to negative s, oh. and then when you, uh, when you do a negative one and negative four comes up to positive four. Negative one to negative four is positive. So now what's in the parentheses is identical in both cases. Uh, so now we know the next step is writing it as in factor form. So what's that look like? Twenty five s squared. We always ask ourselves when it looks like we're done, we've done some big thing like factor by grouping, we always want to make sure that we're done. Are we done? Is there anything more we can do? Yeah, factor S minus four. What's this? What's that? A difference of two perfect squares, yeah. So I always look on, on the lookout for that. They like to do that towards the end. You know, you do the factor by grouping, you done it so well, and you forget, oh, maybe there's a difference of squares or a sum of cubes or something that comes out of that. So just look for that. So let's let's have kind of a, a 
wrap up to this factoring stuff. The number one first thing you should always do before you even start to look at difference of squares, quadratics, factor by grouping. Remember what that is? You should do very, very first thing. Combine common multiples. What's that? Combine common multiples. Combine common multiples? Like like terms? Yeah, like terms. If there happen to be like terms, you should probably combine those. If you remember, there was a problem a few pages back. Uh, not that one, not that one, but this one and this one. What was the very first thing we did in both of these cases? Yeah, so like, if we can, it's great. If we can, pull something out that's in common, it makes all the coefficients smaller. It, it might change the, uh, the exponents of your variables. So let's look for something that they all have in common first. Factor out the greatest common factor that all the terms in the polynomial have in common. Okay? That only works if all of them have it in common. You can't have three of them have it in common and the fourth one doesn't. That doesn't work. Next, we just look for patterns. The patterns that we have are quadratics or something that's in quadratic form. These have in common that there are three terms. We have difference of squares, difference of cubes, sum of cubes. What do those all have in common? Two terms instead of three. This last one we just did was factor by grouping. And part of that factor by grouping, the grouping part is two groups of two, which means they need to have four terms. So there's three terms. Is it a quadratic or is it a quadratic form? Uh, if it's two terms, maybe it's one of these. If it's four terms, maybe it's this guy right here. None of those right now will say we can't factor it. So if we're masters of, of, of this step, we're doing great on 5.4. Okay. Um, now, the homework will be just 5.4, but I'm going to have a lead into 5.5 that I hope you'll uh, take to heart and uh, have it help you when we go to 5.4. Or 5.5, yeah. Okay, so here's the scenario. You have found this scrap of paper. It's got most of it ripped off, but somebody started their homework on this piece of paper. Okay? Um, and the, they're supposed to factor the polynomial, but um, you, like, it's a kind of a different problem for you because they already started factoring and they have one of the factors. You have one of the factors already to start with. And so your job becomes to figure out what, what's that other factor that got ripped off of that piece of paper. You see how the, the scenario is slightly modified. In 5.4, we already had, we, we didn't have any factors. We just had the polynomial and we wanted to factor it out. We had to figure out what they were. Okay. But now we have the polynomial that we need to factor. We need to find the factors of it. And we have one of the factors and in this imagined scenario is because somebody started to do the work and uh, apparently finished the work, but then we don't have the whole picture. Okay. So this is setting us up for dividing polynomials. Right? We had the same situation if you found a piece of paper that said uh, factor the number and you saw 35 and the paper was ripped and here you saw 5 times, so what got ripped off? Seven. There was a seven there that that person had found, but you know, they didn't see it anymore. That's what we're doing here. And really, when we say, "What are we multiplying five by to get 35, That's that's division. We're really asking, "What's 35 divided by five?" Does that make sense? 
So that's the scenario. So we can take out our piece of paper. We'll just put it right underneath this piece of paper and figure out what that other thing was. <coughs> well, let's just put it together little by little, piece by piece. Could you make a good guess as to what this first term would have to be? Three. It's the number three? Just x. X squared. Two x. Two x. X squared? Yep. Two x. Two x squared. Two x squared? No. Why is it two x squared? I mean, think about it. When we find this other factor, we should be able to multiply this factor by this factor and get the original. That's the definition of having factor to follow. Really. So we should be able to multiply this by that, by this whole thing, once we found the whole thing, and get this. All right? But there's more, isn't there? There's, yeah. there's gotta, there's two most likely there's more. 2x squared and then plus x. You think of plus x? Why do you think that? Because the x right there on the other one has to go in there to make the x squared. You need to get this x squared as well. Yeah. Okay, now you're, you're headed down the right path. But let me, let's do it piece by piece, like real slow and methodical so that we don't miss anything. Because look at, that's not the only place that x squared is going to come from. Let me show you what I mean. So we'll distribute the x first. Okay, we get the 2x cubed just like we needed to get. Right? We knew we needed to get 2x cubed. Then we're also going to have to distribute the 2 in there at some point, right? So let's see what that will give us. That will give us 4x squared, right? What do we want to get? Just 2x squared. We want to get x squared. We only want to wind up, in the very oh. end, we only want to have x squared. Okay. This has to be 2x squared because we have to get 2x to the third, so there's no getting around that. But when we distribute the 2, we get 4x squared, which is not what we want. One x squared. We're off. We are off by how much? Four. We're off by 3x squared. If we could subtract 3x squared, we just subtract 3x squared, then we'd be back down to the x squared that we want. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, that's just wishful thinking right now. It's, how are we going to get a negative 3x squared? Anybody think of a way that we can get a negative 3x squared? If we had a negative 3x in this factor, then when we go to distribute the x plus 2 to this term, x times negative 3x is negative 3x squared, just like we wanted. Okay, so now, so far, we get 2x cubed plus an x squared, where we put these two together. That's good, right? But then again, we have to multiply the 2 times the negative 3x. We have to distribute everything to everything else. We have to distribute 2 to negative 3x. So we get negative 6x. Is that right? Nine. What do we want to get? Negative 5x. We get negative 5x. So minus, minus, minus 1. No, plus, plus, one. plus 1. Uh, plus 1x, right? How are we going to get a 1x? Plus, plus, one. Let's put a plus 1 in here. That way, when we take the x times the 1, we can get a 1x. Okay. So we do get the x, uh, the, sorry, the uh, minus 5x. Negative 6x plus x is negative 5x. Okay. Oh, I don't know where that one went. Okay. Well, we distribute the x to the 1. We get the 1x. What's left to do? Okay, so now we're just hoping that it works out. We're hoping that we get the 2. Let's see what happens. 2 times the 1 does give us the 2. Right. If it didn't come out to give us 2 at the end, we'd kind of be out of ideas. Because we're already, we, we had an x squared, then an x, then a 1. Like, we don't have, all we have left are constants. And if we put another constant, we're going to get another x, and that's going to throw this off. We don't want to throw that off. 
So this one works out nicely. x plus 2 is a factor of 2x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 2, because we found a factor that we can multiply x plus 2 by to get that. If it didn't come out nicely, if we didn't get a 2 at the end, even after all that work, then we would have, we would be in a situation where we have a remainder. So, I've, I've taught long division of polynomials many, many, many times, and it always confuses students, and so I've started to teach it this way. So as you can see, what long division is doing, it's doing exactly this process. It is figuring out what you would need to be in this factor, figuring out how far you're off, right? how far you're off, and then figuring out a way to get back on to the term that you actually want to get. So what we just did was we took x plus 2 and we divided it into 2x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 2. And we won't worry about, what, maybe we'll pick up next time, next class by seeing how those are exactly the same thing. Okay. Um, but that's it. If you, if you didn't understand that, I, I think that went really well. You guys participated well. It was Fluid, it was nice. So if you go back and watch that later on YouTube uh, and, and, and just keep going through it, I think it'll really help you get you ready for long division. Okay?